الله أكبر الله أكبر My name is Ahmed Naim and I'll be your chairman for the evening. What we are, what we've come to listen to tonight is Mr. Ahmed Didat. What he'll be speaking upon is a book written by the Pope. Now in this book, he deals with various religions and amongst one of the religions he deals with is Islam. Now in the book, he, deal, he devotes approximately four pages to Islam. And it is those four pages that Mr. Didat would reply to tonight. So without keeping you further, I would call Mr. Didat to speak to you tonight. Thank you. Alhamdulillah wahda. Wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'da. Allahumma ya mufattihul abwaab, wa ya musabibul asbab, wa ya dalil al-ha'irin. توكلت عليك يا رب العالمين وأفوض أمري لله إن الله بصير بالعباد. Mr. Chairman and my dear brothers and sisters, the topic has been well advertised. The topic is Islam's answer to the Pope's pious pronouncements. I'm sure all of you must have seen this by now. Islam's answer to the Pope's pious pronouncements. An amazing thing, this morning I went to Maritzburg and got the Maritzburg newspaper called the Natal Witness. We had also supplied them with the advert. This advert appeared in the Sunday Tribune, in the Daily News, in the Natal Mercury, in the Leader, in the Post, as is. But the witness, the Natal witness in Maritzburg, they have changed the title. The advert appeared, the advert appears, but they put it, Islam's answer to the Pope's pronouncements. The word pious is taken out. Pious is eliminated. And they give us a reason that the ASA, there is the body called the Advertising Standards Authority, ASA. They send us a fax telling us, in reference to this advert, it says here, the word of the use, pious, in this particular context, may be, may be seen to be disparaging. This word pious, may be seen to be disparaging in terms of Clause 6, Section 2 of the Code of Advertising Practice. So if you take the word pious out, then they will allow the advert. Otherwise, the advert is rejected. What makes me to consider him pious? You see, in the Holy Quran, in Surah Maryam, Surah Maryam, Chapter 19 of the Holy Quran, Allah Bari Ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدَى And they say that Ar-Rahman, the merciful God, has begotten a son. They say, who say? The Christians. They say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has begotten a son. In answer to that, Allah says, لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْءٍ إِدَّى It's one of the most abominable assertions, the worst Swearing that you can give Allah is this. Takadu samawatu yatafattarna minhu. Eti the skies are ready to burst. Watan shakkal ardu. And the earth to split asunder. Wata khirul jibalu hadda. And the mountains to fall down in utter ruin. Anda awlil rahmani walada. That they should say that Ar Rahman, the merciful God, has begotten his son. Allah reacts very strongly. The worst swearing I can give any of you. is to call you a bastard. This word bastard, people get shocked. It is from the Holy Bible. The King James Version has this word bastard three times in this Bible. Three times the word bastard. So look, this is biblical. This is not an offensive word anymore. It's in the Holy Bible. 
the worst swearing I can give anybody is to call you a bastard. Insinuating that your mother had committed zina, adultery. That's the strongest. Worst swearing I can give anybody is to call him that. Allah says the worst swearing you can give me, him, is to say that he has begotten a son. Because begetting is an animal act. It belongs to the lower animal functions of sex. How can you attribute such a quality to God? That God begot a son, somebody else's wife, Joseph the carpenter's wife, he goes and have sex with her and beget a bastard child. Mazallah, may Allah forgive. So he reacts very strongly. Now, His Holiness the Pope, you see, in this book of his, Crossing the Threshold of Hope, he is giving biblical quotation in this 200 and some 20 pages. He has quoted the Bible 209 times. In this book, little book, 209 times he's quoted the Holy Bible. Verses, 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 verses. And one verse, he quotes it eight times. Eight times the same verse. Amazing. No other verse. That one verse he quoted eight times. And that is, the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, 16 is a famous verse among the Christians. No Christian can do missionary work without memorizing this. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him might have eternal life and shall not perish. The only begotten son God has got, according to the Bible, many sons. He's got sons by the tons in the Bible. But he said, no, Jesus is not like that. Jesus is the only begotten son. Begotten, not made. Not like Adam. Adam was made by God. Every dog, pig and donkey was made by God. Not like that. This is begotten, not made. Means he had sexed and produced. Begetting means sexed and produced. So Allah reacts. And His Holiness the Pope, eight times in his book, the same chapter, John 3.16, he quotes, and every time he quotes, he takes the word begotten out. Shouldn't we applaud him? Please, give it, give it a clap. <laughs> so if I call him this a pious thing, he's heeding the warning of the Quran. He has heeded. So in my Quran speaks in the Sunday Tribune, I quote this Quranic ayah. Every week, if you people are reading it, I don't know whether I'm just throwing it away. You people, I don't know whether you benefit from it. The Quran speaks. Every Sunday, there's a quotation from the Holy Quran with commentary. So I quoted this ayah a couple of months ago. So, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَنُ وَلَدَا لَكَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّا That's all. So those who say that Allah has begotten a son, this is one of the most monstrous things for anybody to do. Most abominable thing for anybody to do. To say that Allah begot a son. And in my notes, I said, you see, His Holiness the Pope, he has heeded the warning of the Quran. Don't talk like that. Allah said, don't talk like that. You're swearing me. You see, you young people, you come along, you want to argue and debate with me. No, people, young people, don't have a little brushing. I don't mind, I don't mind, I enjoy it. And you irritate me. I'm an old man, 77. Maybe I didn't have a good night's sleep. Maybe I had taken some medicine, some pills, and you irritate me. So what I say? I say, go, go, man, you're a bloody fool. You're a fool, what do you do? You laugh. No, no, I'm sure, you laugh, you won't punch me on the jaw. Eh, for calling you a fool, and you irritate me further. I say, go, go, man, you are a bloody ox. You know ox? You know ox? Hmm? I say, go, go, man, you are a bloody monkey. I say, you are a bloody donkey. What you do? You laugh. You laugh. No, I say, the old man is tired now. Man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm rubbing him the wrong way around. But if I take your mother's name, no laughter. I say, uncle, not one more word. I'm going to lose all the respect I have for you. Already it's gone. If once I touch your mother's name, you, there's no more respect. But you say, the shot of punching me on the jaw, you say, look, I'm going to lose all the respect I have for you. Don't take my mother's name. Don't take my wife's name. Don't take my daughter's name. Call me what you like. Call me monkey, call me donkey. 
Call me a fool, call me what you like, but don't take my mother's name. Am I right? This is how Allah reacts. That the worst swearing they can give me is this. And His Holiness, the Pope, has heeded the warning and He has expunged it eight times out of eight. Eight out of eight times. Not even by mistake the word begotten got in. Inadvertently, it didn't get in. So, I take off my hat to the Pope and if he was here, I'd kiss his hand. And I'll encourage everybody when he comes in September, kiss his hand. That guy deserves that you kiss his hands. But if you want to go and kiss his hand, he'll kick you in the face. I mean, I mean, this man is a master psychologist. Look, he's using psychology. He's catching fish. He'll kick you in the face. This is how he puts it. For example, I'll show you. Were you all given this pamphlet? You're supposed to be given tonight. Everybody was supposed to have this pamphlet. What happened? The Pope says, this pamphlet, the whole chapter from this book is reproduced. And this was supposed to be given out to each and everyone here tonight. Nobody has received it. Stop. I think we were very busy. My brother Kasim, who has been in charge of this, we were a whole day in Marisburg in the Supreme Court, waiting for the master of the Supreme Court to behead us all. I left at 4 o'clock to go home and charge my batteries for this. And they just finished 6 o'clock and they came now. So please forgive them. If you have the time, pick it up from the IPC. The whole chapter on Islam, on the life of Muhammad, is in this book. We reproduced it here. And this was, I was supposed to give it to you more like a text to say, now, let's see on the front page, what does it say? It says, he says, I'm quoting the Pope again. Some of the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Quran. Some of the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Quran. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I had touched this on the 26th of July, here in this hall. How many of you were present? Please put up your hand, those of you who were present. Just put up high that I can see. Hmm. No, it bears repeating, it bears repeating. See, if all of you were here, then I says, no, let's carry on from there. But bulk of you, I can see, you were not here. So, here are some of the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Quran. Most probably somebody told him. Or probably he read the Quran. Because in the Holy Quran, Allah says, Allah says, Huwa Allahu allazi la ilaha illahu. He is Allah besides whom there is no other God. Al Malik, the King, Al Quddus, the Holy One, As Salam, the source of peace and perfection, Al Mu'min, the guardian of faith, Al Muhaymin, the preserver of safety, Al Aziz, the exalted in might, Al Jabbar, the irresistible, Al Mutakabbir, the supreme. Subhanallah, Amma Yushrikun. Glory to Allah. He is free from the things that they attribute to Him. Who Allah, He is Allah, Al Khalik, the creator, Al Bari, the evolver. Al Muthawir, the bestower of forms and colors. Who al As Lahul Asmaul Husna. These are the most beautiful names. Allah says that. And the Pope reproduces that. Some of the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Quran. There's nothing like that in his Bible. There's nothing like that in the Bhagavad Gita or the Ramayana. There's no other religious scripture on earth which has this type of attributes given to God Almighty. And the Pope says that, coming from the mouth of the enemy, he says that these are the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Quran, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 99 attributes. Then he uses one word and he discounts it all. He's a master psychologist. Look, he's caught us. 
When he says these beautiful words, confirming the Quranic statement, Lahul Asmaul Husna, these are the most beautiful names Allah says, and he says some of the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Quran. Could we have said better than that? No. Then he uses one word, and that one word, he discounts it all. And last time I was offering my daughters first, you know, a hundred ran for giving me two reasons why the Muslim was not likely to have this book. You remember? I said, the Muslim is not likely to have this book. And in the audience I asked, is there anybody who has seen this book or read it? I own it. Please put up your hand. And there was only one lady. She put up her hand. So I asked her, are you a Roman Catholic? She says, no. She's something else. I said, oh. So only one lady had this book. In the whole audience, it was a packed house that night, on the 26th, packed. But only one person had the book. So I said, there are two reasons why a Muslim was not likely to have this book. And anybody, starting with my sisters, my daughters, say, anybody gives me the two reasons, this hundred run is for you. So I bring another hundred run for you. That night, nobody had it. I took it back. I took it back because nobody had the right answer. Nobody, not even the men. But first chance I'm giving to my daughters. One word, very simple word, he uses one word to destroy it all, to undo what he has said. Yes, my sister. Father. Mm -hmm. Come, don't be afraid, there's nothing to lose. There's 100 runs to gain. If you don't need it, give it to charity. Come, 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 my sisters, my daughters. Ah, that sounds nice. Yes, Ben? Huh? Begotten now. All right, I leave it open to the men now. Yes. Ah, ah, look, one second, one second, one second. If you have heard me before, you are disqualified. <laughs> you know, suppose you were sitting with me and I was chatting with you and I shared it with you and I offered you a hundred rand then. I did. I did offer to a number of people, hundred rands. This journalist from the Natal Daily News, they came along and I said, right, this is what the Pope says. Right, marvelous, beautiful. Then I said, look, I give you 100 dance, I take it out from my pocket. One word this guy used and he discounts it all. Come on, 100 dance. Huh? No, no, I don't want to know that. I want to know what word, that one word. Huh? No. Oh. Did you hear from me? Yes, His Holiness. He uses one word. I said, that one word is, but. But. That's all. The word is, but. The next word after, in the human language, comma, and the next word is, but. Now, that word, but. This has been butting it. He butted it. This comes, that means mm, all this what I say is true, but it's nothing. It's all whitewash. But he is ultimately a God outside of the world. A God who is only majesty. But he is a God, this Allah of yours, he is outside of the world. He is there, sitting in his heavens, in outer space. His Majesty, Al-Aziz, the Exalted Might, Al-Jabbar, the Irresistible, Al-Mutakabbir, the Supreme, He's there, far, far away. His only Majesty. So we respond, he says, Sir, you see, besides what you are saying, the Quran also speaks about Allah, besides the qualities I gave you just now. He speaks about As-Sami basir he is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. Allah. These are his qualities. He is Al-Latif Al-Khabir. He is the subtle, knowing the finest mysteries. Al-Khabir, the aware of everything. He is al hayyul Al-Qayyum. He is self-subsisting. He is eternal. He is Al-Ghafur al wadud He is of forgiving. He is loving. And 80 more attributes. Besides the ones I have given you already. 
but says, yes, you see, but his only majesty, he is never Emmanuel. He is never Emmanuel. You know what Emmanuel means? God with us. Emmanuel means God with us. You see, we have God with us. Jesus Christ is God Almighty who came down to earth. Your Allah is there in the heavens. We say, look, the Quran says, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِكُ وَالْمَغْرِبِ To Allah belongs the east and the west. فَأَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّوا فَسَمَا وَجْهُ اللَّهِ And we say, where way you turn is the presence of Allah. Allah says, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ He is indeed closer to you than your jugular veins, your very life, your very existence. We say, yes, but not like Jesus. He is with us. He is there, but you can't see him. You can't see him. Here, this God, we can lean on his breast. John, John, Gospel of St. John, chapter 13, verse 23. One of the disciples at the Last Supper, he was, the Bible says, verse 23, that is sleeping on his bosom. Can you do that to Allah? Can you do that to Allah? You sleep on Allah's bosom? Hmm? Verse 25, says, and resting on his breast, is asking, who is it that's going to betray you? Just, you that do that to Allah? Look, this is Jesus. You can say, this is God, Jesus. He's there. You can sleep on his breast, on his bosom. He's eating broiled fish and honeycomb with you. He's going to the toilet. Does it befit Allah? No. He says, you see, he is Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. He is God with us. I am asking His Holiness, if He was here, if you were having a dialogue, I say, Your Holiness, where did you get this? He says, No, it is in the Gospel of St. Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, Matthew, chapter 1, verse 23. So what does it say? He says, It says that a virgin shall bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Where did you get this, sir? Where did Matthew get this? He said he got it from the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. This guy has picked it up from there and put it into the New Testament. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 23. He shall be called Emmanuel. Now, if you have a concordance, and it's not likely, a concordance means every word of the Bible is there. This one occurs so many times, this one occurs so many times, this one occurs a hundred times, if you have a concordance, I have. I need it, you see, I need it to make things easy for me. In the concordance, the word Emmanuel occurs only once in the New Testament. Only once. Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. Only once. So if he was supposed to be called Emmanuel, somebody must have called him Emmanuel. In the 27 books of the New Testament, the word Emmanuel does not recur, does not occur again. Once only. That means nobody called him Emmanuel. So if a prophecy is made that this thing is going to happen, people will call him Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Then we'll know says he was called by people Emmanuel. If there was a prophecy about John Washtela. I'm, I'm sorry, Caron, Caron, Caron Washtela. That he will become the Pope in 1981 of the Roman Catholic Church. There's a prophecy. There was a prophecy. I'm asking the Pope. His name is Caron Wojtela. That's his native name. When he was born, he was baptized Caron. And Wojtela is his surname. It's when he becomes a Pope, then the name changes. He takes on a title. Pope John Paul II. The one who died before him in one month and three days. The previous Pope. One month and the people poisoned him. He took his place. That was Pope John Paul I. So he took the same title as Pope John Paul II. That's his choice. I said, if you, were never, if you had never become a Pope, and there was a prophecy about Koran Washtela becoming a Pope, and you didn't become a Pope, what does it mean? It's worthless, rubbish. Even if there are a thousand prophecies about Karen Washtela, he'll become a Pope. And if you didn't become a Pope, nobody called you a Pope in your life, then you're not the Pope. Somebody must call you Pope. Pope John Paul II. Pope John Paul II. We call him so. So now I said, if there was a prophecy, the prophecy is fulfilled. 
in you. This was supposed to be fulfilled in Jesus. Did his mother call him Emmanuel? The schools, the children with whom he was schooling, did any one of those children call him Emmanuel? Did any of his disciples call him Emmanuel? In his life, while he walked this earth, is there a single person called him Emmanuel? He says, no. Then he says, what kind of prophecy is this? Huh? You're just thumb-sucking something, like a little baby, spoiled child, it's your toy, you say, this is it, but nobody called him Emmanuel. Emmanuel. I don't know whether you had the chance of <laughs> reading Edwards. Emmanuel. There was a film here, man, pornographic film. It was banned in this country under the old government, under the new government, Emmanuel, pornography. This woman is a, is a, is a harlot, a whore, a prostitute, Emmanuel. This was a film going on here for quite some time in Durban. Do you know that? And I, thank God you people don't read all that. <laughs> Emmanuel means God with us. But the name of the prostitute, would you call her? Miss God with us, Miss God with us, that's what it means. Huh? That prostitute, if you met her in the flesh, will you call her, what's your name? My father gave me the name Emmanuel. Right? Possible. Would you call her, says, God with us? Miss, this prostitute, you're going to bargain. Hmm? You say, God with us, God with us, what's the price? Huh? Is that how you talk? Is that what? Emmanuel means God with us. No, that's what it means. <laughs> I said, there are so many names, there are so many names. You see, the Jews gave their children names. We give our children names. Beautiful names. Our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His father had died before he was born. His grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. He takes him to the Kaaba as an infant in his arms. And he's introducing this little child, his grandson, to the chiefs of the Quraysh. They're asking, what's his name? He says, Muhammad. He said, Muhammad? It's a very strange name. First time we hear that word. He said, you see, I want my grandchild to be praised throughout the world. That's his ambition. He's a mushrik. The grandfather is a mushrik. But this is his desire that my grandchild, the remnant of my son, Abdullah, I want his name to be broadcast throughout the world and praised throughout the world. It happens. His wish is fulfilled. Five times a day, every day of the year, the Muazzin goes on top of the minaret and he shouts, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Every name has some kind of a sentimental connection, some prophetic <coughs> quality. So, he, grandfather of the Prophet, gave this name to our Nabi, Muhammad. The praised one. May Allah have him praised. Then we find in the Bible names like Eli. Eli. In the book of Samuel, first book of Samuel, in the Bible. 32 times there is a priest, his name is Eli. You know what Eli means in Hebrew? My God. Eli means my God. My God. That's his name. His name is my God. Mr. My God, how are you, Mr. My God? Hey, my, his, his father is calling him My God. His mother is calling him My God. Everybody is calling him My God. Eli means My God. So, and Jesus on the cross, according to the Bible, is supposed to have shout, cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Which means, My God, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? Was he shouting for the priest? My God, My God, who? That priest? My God. No, 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 this is the name. People give name to your children that maybe they imbibe that quality of ever thinking that God is with you. Eli, my God, anything, my God, my God. We have a family here called Bismillah family. Yeah? You know, the wives of Dr. Mayat and Dr. Mal. Dr. Mal's wife passed away, I think in an accident. In an accident, yes. Uh, Zohra Mayat, Zohra Mayat of the Cultural Center? Yes. You know what's her surname? Anybody know? No hundred round. No hundred round for you. Anybody know? Bismillah. No, her surname is Bismillah. See? 
Bismillah means in the name of Allah. That's a surname. He says his brother, her brother, Bismillah. Mr. Ahmad, Bismillah. Her brother Muhammad, Bismillah. Her sister Fatima, Bismillah. No, means that is a surname. In the name of Allah. In the name of Allah. In the name. That's a name. She is not Allah. The father is not Allah. No, no, this is a name, a quality that you are giving. You want the person to be ever remembering Bismillah in the name of Allah. Everything you do, Bismillah. In the Bible, you have a prophet by the name of Joel. Joel. Jo, Jo means Jah. They say it means Yehovah. Jehovah. El means God. He's God. Yehovah God. That's his name. Joel. And General Diane, you know General Diane of Israel, the one-eyed man, his daughter came here to South Africa. She was a journalist. And you know what's her name? Yael Diane. Yael Diane. That's her name. You know what Yael means? Oh God. Oh God. Yael means oh God. This is the name people give their children with the idea that they have this godly quality. Ever thinking. Oh, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Wallah, Wallah, Wallah. But Ya El is not, oh God. She is not God. Her father didn't think when he gave the name, he says, this is my God. Or the mother says, this is my God. No, no. These are the names that you give to people that may they imbibe those qualities. Emmanuel. You must have that quality to be called Emmanuel. And you know what? This word Emmanuel is in the Quran. If I were to offer you a hundred runs, you can't get it. Bakari, you know? Emmanuel in Arabic form is in the Quran. Anybody know? You know? Emmanuel is in the Quran. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm glad I didn't offer the hundred runs. <laughs> <laughs> it says in Surah Tawbah, Surah Tawbah, chapter 9, ayah number 40. This word Emmanuel, how it comes. Allah says, Is huma fil ghari when they two were in the cave. The story is, Allah doesn't go into details. He doesn't go into stories. The Quran is not a once upon a time book. Telling you fairy tales. This is a concentrated book. It goes straight to the point. One verse and it, see how much it tells you. Is huma fil ghari. When they were both in the cave. Is the hijrah. Allah tells him. Now it's time that you move from Makkah. Go to Medina. So as soon as they leave Makkah. They say look if they keep on running. The people with faster horses or camels. They'll catch up and they'll kill them. So just outside Makkah. There is a cave. Ghari Thawr. So they went and spent three days there, three days and three nights in the cave, waiting for the, the, the chase to be over, to cool down, before moving further. And in the cave, while they are there, the mushriks came to the mouth of the cave. They reached it, smelling it out, thinking, looking for footprints, and they came to the mouth of the cave, and if they only bent down, they could have seen them. So Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, he says, Ya Rasulullah, they are on us. We are alone. Is huma fil ghari, when they two were in the cave, is yaqulu li sahibihi, he said to his companion, la tahzan, don't fear, fear not, inna Allah ma'ana, Allah is with us. Inna, most certainly, most assuredly, verily, Allah is with us. Inna Allah ma'ana, Allah ma'ana, Allah ma'ana, Al ma'ana, Emmanuel, God with us. This is the quality of the Prophet He didn't know that he was fulfilling prophecies of the book of Isaiah from the Old Testament. He doesn't know all that. That there's something written in the Bible. That is in the Old Testament and the New Testament. He knows nothing about it. Wallah, he knew nothing about it. This is what Allah makes him to say. Is huma fil ghari, is yaqulu li sahibihi, la tahzan, inna Allah ma'ana, Allah is with us. This is the quality of the man. 
In contrast, according to your book, according to your record, you're telling the Christian. Jesus Christ says, God has deserted him. Allah, Allah, lama sabachtani. Say, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? You let me down. Muhammad says, no, Allah is with us. To whom does this quality fit? To your Jesus, you are only claiming, you are thumb sucking. Here is an actual life experience, and this is not done, you know, and afterwards, 1400 years ago, this is in the Quran, and the Prophet, وسلم, he knew nothing about the Bible. There was no Christian Bible in the 6th century. In, in Arabic. There was no Bible in the Arabic language in the 6th century. That Abu Nabi could have seen. And he, can you imagine an Ummi going through the Bible and encyclopedia and you know, finding that word Emmanuel in the book of Isaiah and finding that word again uh, in the book of Matthew. And then he says, now look, let me also, I'm going to use that word. And he's waiting for the opportunity and he got the opportunity in the cave and he used it. Can you imagine? Inna Allah ma'ana. Ah, I have a friend. In, in Abu Dhabi. He's a doctor, urologist. His name is Abdul Munim Billah. Abdul Munim Billah. Billah is his surname. Abdul Munim Billah. Billah means with Allah. That's his father's name, Billah. Our friend in, in Algeria, the first person to become the president after the fight with the, with the French, Ahmad bin Ahmad bin Billah, first president or prime minister of Algeria, freeing themselves from the French. His name was Ahmad bin Billah. Ahmad, son, with Allah. No, what do you say? His father's name was Billah. With Allah. Was he Allah? Wherever he went around. No, no. This is the quality. We want the person to imbibe that quality that he's thinking that Allah is ever with us. Allah is ever with us. Ever conscious of his presence. Then, His Holiness the Pope, he says here, he said, the council, the Roman Catholic Church, the council, has also called for the church to have a pro dialogue with the followers of the prophet. To have a dialogue with the followers of the Prophet. We want to have a dialogue with the Muslims. The word Prophet, here in his book, he writes in inverted commas. You know, there's two commas, like two wings. The word Prophet, in inverted commas. Then on page 43, again, he uses that word prophet for our Nabi Akarim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in inverted commas. So if we were having a dialogue, he says, Your Holiness, look, let us come to terms. Let us understand the terminology that we are using. When you use words, we want to know what you mean. Do we mean the same thing? When we talk about the prophet, the prophet, the holy prophet, we know we're talking about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we write the word prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T, prophet. But you don't put inverted commas. So, Your Holiness, will you please explain why those inverted commas? You know what it means? You know what it means? Inverted commas, what do they mean? They mean that I don't say that. It's what people say. I'm only quoting people say prophet, prophet, prophet. I use the word prophet. I don't believe that he's a prophet. Therefore, you put inverted commas. I say, His Holiness. If I put that in inverted commas, it means I don't say that. That's what people say. Inverted commas. That's what it means in English. Inverted commas. So I want to know, Your Holiness, you have used this word prophet twice in your book about Muhammad وسلم, and both times you put the word in inverted commas. Will you please explain? Why did you put the word in inverted commas? In his language, in the western languages, it means I'm quoting. That's what people say. I don't say that. So you do not accept him as a prophet. We accept your Jesus as one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth. We believe in his many miracles including those of giving life back to the dead by Allah's permission, and of healing those born blind and the lepers by Allah's permission. We believe in all that. As a prophet, a mighty messenger of God, and my Rasul, a Karim, my prophet, you put him in inverted commas. Why? The meaning is you don't accept it. 
I want to know why. Oh, he said, you see, he has so many wives. He has so many wives. My Jesus had no wives. So I said, the number of wives disqualifies a person. In your sight, the number of wives, how many had? Nine or eleven? Okay. Disqualifies a man. I said, yes. But I said, you see, in your holy Bible, Solomon, the wise, he's got 700 wives and 300 concubines. 1,000 women at his disposal. 1,000. 700 wives and 300 concubines. And he is called the son of God in the Bible. He's the son of God, Suleiman al Islam, Solomon. That doesn't disqualify him. If a thousand wives, the man gets, doesn't get disqualified. Why should a man with nine wives get disqualified? Huh? huh? I mean, what kind of double standard is this? Oh, he performed no miracles. I said, look, the greatest miracle that he performed is the Quran. I said, no, no, no. I want something that man walks on the water, flying in the air like a bird, giving life back to the dead, making water into wine. Muhammad didn't do anything like that. Oh, there are some 300 miracles recorded about our Nabi. The Muslims don't go into that. We say, this is basic. Come down to earth. Here, let's talk, man. Sense, reason, let's logic. Because I can't reproduce the miracle of Jesus turning water into wine and say, now believe. I turn this water into wine, bring it, and you taste it. Yeah, it tastes like wine. So now I tell you one plus one plus one is one. Believe that. I said, no, man, Mr. D, that has got no connection. No connection between turning water into wine and one plus one plus one. It's three. It can never be one. I said, no, can't you see what I can do? I said, nonsense. He didn't perform any miracles. But I said, you see, sir, in your book, in your Bible, Jesus Christ, he testifies about Yahya alayhi salam. They call him John the Baptist. Yahya alayhi salam. He says, Jesus says, among those born of women, everybody is born of woman. He's a human being. Among those born of women, there has not risen another greater than John the Baptist. The greatest of the Jewish prophets is John the Baptist, Yahya alayhi salam. And he performed no miracles, according to a book. Not one. So how can you disqualify Muhammad? See, but now this is the style, this is the style that they go to. They want to have a dialogue. They want to have a dialogue with the followers of the prophet. He says, come, let us talk. We want to have a dialogue. We have been advertising the papers. That guy, when he responded to that advert of ours, that His Holiness the Pope has heeded the warning of the Quran. He has expunged the word. I said then seven times because that's the, I, I counted seven times. But now I found one more. Eight times. In the letter I wrote to the press, I said seven times. Actually now eight times in that book. He, used, he expunges the word. Be God. So I said, now, let us talk. Let us talk. So he wrote back. He said, you see, he didn't heed the warning of the Quran. Not because the Quran says, don't talk like that. Stop it. That he stopped it. He has been using the new American standard version of the Bible. That's what he said. The Pope has been using the new American standard version of the Bible. And that was new to me. I have dozens of different Bibles, but I didn't have that. So I sent my man to the Bible house in Smith Street and purchased one, the new American Standard Version of the Bible. It cost me 13 rands. Cheap, cheap. 13 rands. I tell you, cheap. For an encyclopedia of a thousand pages. Cheap. Compared to this 200 page book, 60 rands. Less one cent change. 59.99. 59.99. Compared to this, Two thousand, a thousand pages at least, for thirteen rands is cheap, good value. So, first thing I do, I look for John three sixteen, and I find the word begotten there, still there. So I write back to the press. I said, you see, this guy is talking. What is truth? He's telling me that we are not speaking the truth. That the Pope has heeded the warning of the Quran. What is truth? Now I'm asking the question: Who is speaking the truth? You tell me, it's in all, all in, in the newspapers. He said, this is what he got from the, the New American Standard Version. I said, now I find that the word is there. That means you lied. I don't say you lied, but I said, it's there. Now, who is speaking the truth, you or me? That means it still stands. That is, he did the Quranic warning. And I said, look, the Pope is talking about having dialogue. Talk, talk, man, talk. 
So I said, look, I am prepared to arrange a meeting for Archbishop Napier in Durban. I said, in the King's Park, I'll get 40,000 people, Hindus, Muslims, Christians, and Jews to come and listen to you. 40,000 at my expense. And we can discuss subjects like, is the Bible God's word? Is Jesus God? Was Christ crucified? And so on. I gave the number of titles. Come, let us talk. They are silent like church mice. This is church mice. Finish. Finish. Silence. No, no. You see, when His Holiness the Pope, when he talks about dialogue, he doesn't mean dialogue. Dialogue Allah wants us to have with him, with the Jews and the Christians. One third of the Quran speaks about the Jews and the Christians. One third is devoted to Jews and Christians. That one third we seem to know nothing about. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Qul, say, Ya Ahl al-Kitab ta'ala. O people of the book, Ahl al-Kitab, who's people of the book? Jews and Christians. Ta'ala, come. Ila kalimatin sawa'im baynana wa baynakum. That we come to common terms as between us and you. Let us get onto a common platform. What the legal people say, common terms. Let's establish common terms on which we are agreed so we don't have a debate. No arguments. Common terms. Let us come to, onto a common platform. And that getting together, Allah says, number one, Allah na'buda illallah, that we worship none but Allah, wala nushrika bihi shay'an, and that we associate no partners with him, wala yattakhiza ba'dun abadan arbaban min dun illah, and that we do not take from among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا But if they turn back, فَقُولُوا شَهَدُوا بِيَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ Tell them that we are Muslims. We have submitted our wills to the will of Allah. Come, come, call them. Are we calling them? Are we calling them? Amazing, amazing. The whole Muslim world, nobody is doing it. Nobody is really doing it. I'm telling you. I can go on telling you about the Arabs. You know, how they prod me. And how I, uh, how I handle them. Alhamdulillah. That's another story. That's another story. But dialogue. Let's have a dialogue. We are saying, come, let us talk, man. No. When he says dialogue, actually he's telling his people, go and convert these people. These people are already prepared to receive Jesus. Look, they accept him as one of the mightiest messengers of God. They believe in his miraculous birth, which many modern-day Christians, including the bishops of the Anglican Church, they don't believe. But we Muslims, we believe. That Hazrat Isa alayhi salam was born without a father. Miracle of Allah's creation. He believes that Jesus is the Messiah, the Messiah. They believe, the Muslims. They believe that he gave life back to the dead by Allah's permission. And he healed those born blind and the lepers by Allah's permission. Look, they're going to, together with us, man. What he needs is a gentle push. That's all. Make him to accept that this Jesus, he died for your sins. That's all. And you ungrateful people, you want to pray five times a day, up and down, up and down. Man, you're killing yourself. One, fasting for one whole bloody month, you know, no water and no food, you know, from sunrise to center. You're killing yourself. You stay jack in your life, you can't eat the pig, you can't eat this and you can't eat that. <laughs> Hot dogs and pork chops you can't have. <laughs> you're killing yourself. Say, so look, God made things easy for you. He sent his son into the world. He himself came down as a son and he died for you. And you ungrateful wretches, you want to go the hard way, sweating it out for your salvation. Jannah, look easy for you. This is, he wants to say, convert the guy. He's already ready to receive the message. Mm -hmm. So Allah wants us to have a dialogue with him. But that dialogue is, Allah is telling you what to talk about. Not the price of oil in your country. Or the price of onion or tea. No, 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 no. Allah says, what to talk about? This is what you must talk about. That we worship none but Allah, one and only God that there is. He said, No, we worship the same God. He said, Which God? He's the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. His God is a triune God, three in one. He's the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So Allah tells you to tell him, Wala taqulu thalasa. Don't say Trinity. This is stop it, it'll be better for you. For your Allah is one Allah. He's not three in one. Are you telling him that? Are we telling them that? I'm telling you. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody really is doing the job. <laughs> this is need some madcaps. I'm telling you, madcaps like Ahmad Dida to do the job. I had a tablighi guy coming from Marisburg, Mr. Yusuf Goka. He's a young man, tablighi. He always comes along. He's some Darul Ulum in, in the Transvaal. When he comes to Durban, he wants to have a little brushing with me. I enjoy that. You young people coming and talking to me, I enjoy that. Wallah, can argue and debate with me, I enjoy that. So he prodded me. To say, I said, look, Yusuf, 
who is the most hated Muslim by the Christians of South Africa? He said, you. <laughs> you think I punch him on the jaw? No. He's saying haq. I said, who is the most hated Muslim by the Jews of South Africa? He said, you. Me. I'm asking, who is the most hated Muslim by the Hindus of South Africa? He said, you. No, I said, it's true. It's true. No, no. Look, haq is haq. True is true. You can all watch for that, I'm sure. You all can watch for that. I am the most hated guy by the Hindus, the Christians, and the Jews. It's true. But I said, you know, we have 500 masjids in the country with 500 imams. Every masjid has an imam. Molvi, Molana, Sheikh. No? Yes. In the Cape, here, Natal, everywhere. Every masjid has an imam. I said, now, there are 500 masjids with 500 imams. Is there one of those imams hated by the Christian? One, 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 one. I want you to give me the name. I want you to tell me that so-and-so imam is hated by the Christian or the Jew or by the Hindu. One. Give me one in that 500. Give me one. Can you think of one? That one Muslim alim is being hated by the Hindu or the Christian or the Jew. One. Give me one name. Man. Fantastic. They're all angels. The only troublemaker is Ahmad Didat. <laughs> Amazing. No, it shows something. What? That I'm a troublemaker. I'm looking for trouble. I don't love my life. I'm 77 years old. Allah has paid me, alhamdulillah. But now I'm going to commit suicide. At this age, I'm going to commit suicide. <laughs> no. You see, we have lost our mission, our job. Primary job of the Muslim is to talk, man. Do dawah. Invite people. That's your primary job. Invite all. Allah says, invite all to the ways of thy Lord with wisdom. Well, and with beautiful preaching. And reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. And he shows you how to do the talk. But that doesn't mean it can't create provocation. Provocation is not a test. Provocation is not a test. Because if that is the test, then our Nabi Karim was a failure. Do you know, at the age of, up to the age of 40, he was loved by his people. He was respected by his people. They gave him, the, the mushiks gave him the title, as sadiq al wadul Amin, a person who fulfills his promises, is sadiq al wad and he's al Amin, he's the truthful, the faithful, the sincere. And that's the title they gave him, before Nubuwa. When he proclaimed his mission, they want to kill him. Hmm? For 13 years, he suffered at their hands. He had to flee for his life. We are talking about the why? He didn't know how to talk. That's what he means. He, he didn't know how to talk. Look, he's provoking the people. They want to kill him. They loved him. All, 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 up to the age of 40, they loved him, and now they want to kill him. Maybe he didn't know how to talk. You know how to talk. Hmm? Allah says, Most certainly in the apostle of Allah, you have the best example. This best example created provocation. From his own people. They want to kill him. Two hijras to Abyssinia the sahabas made. And he had to flee for his life with everyone. Lock, stock and barrel. Everybody fled for their life to Medina. And they didn't leave him in peace even in Medina. Badar, Wahat, Khandak. War, war, war. Now in Medina he starts with the Jews. Do you know that? Amazing. <laughs> this man. He, he, look, if you were with him, a sahaba, would you have said, Ya Rasulullah, look man, we have just run for our life from Makkah. Huh? The mushiks are still after our blood. And now you're starting with the Yahudi. Ya Rasulullah, you know, Allah says, Udu ila sabili rabbi kabil hikmati. You know, invite all to the ways of the Lord with wisdom. In other words, implying he doesn't know wisdom. You know. Allah says, Habib says, you know. You know wisdom. A man Abi didn't know wisdom. Now he starts with the Jews. He starts with the Christians. He starts with the Munafiks. Four different groups of people now, they want to kill him. Do you know that? Why? Because he didn't know how to talk. You are the nicest people. 500 Imams, not one is hated by anybody. One fantastic community. We are the most fantastic nation on earth. 160 million Arabs. Not one Arab is hated by the Jew or the Christian or the Hindu. Do you know that? Not one. You are fantastic people. Sab Allah wale. All godly people. No, what is it? No, you're not doing your job. When you do your job, you create reaction. It can't be helped. That's the nature of man. Allah describes it as bal nakzifu bil haqq al batil when truth is hurled against falsehood bal nakzifu bil haqq al batil fa idh mawhu faza huwa zahikun he said it knocks out his brains 
When you have falsehood and I throw huck at you, it destroys your falsehood. When your brain is knocked out, how do you behave? Like a saint fellow. Huh? You go berserk, man. You go berserk, you're going to kill. That is what the mission will do. to kill, kill, kill. They go berserk. It's haq against batil. This is the nature of haq. When you speak haq, he's going to hurt somebody. See, if I just agree with you, everything that you're doing, ditto, 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 everything I say, you say, ditto, ditto. But you are a cigarette smoker, and as soon as I touch cigarette, it's uncle, look, man, leave that out, man. You, know, you keep to your religion, you know, talk about religion to people. You know, the cigarette business, why are you wasting your time? So look, business is business, man. Look, uncle, you keep to your religion, you know, talk to the Yahudi and the Nasara, convert them, you say, <laughs> leave me alone. So, the councils also call the church for a dialogue with the followers of the Prophet. Mm -hmm. So, we are looking for a dialogue. Then he says in, in his uh, beautiful volume there, describing the Muslim, he says, nevertheless, nevertheless, the religiosity of Muslims deserves respect. How nice. Your religiosity. You know, you go traveling by bus. And it's time for salad. Stop the bus, stop the bus. Come outside and there on the roadside, you make salad. Good people. No, no, we, good people. Miswak, miswak. <laughs> good people, good people. No, no, I believe in miswak. I'm telling you, look. I'm telling you, I believe in miswak. <laughs> you feel my teeth is 77. Still. Original, original, <laughs> Miswak, beautiful job. So he says, the religiosity of the Muslims deserve our respect. You know what he's saying? Now it makes me angry. Now the guy makes me angry. Religiosity, you think means religious. You think it means religious. Very good. What a cello help to Muslim. Very good people you feel like. Very religious people. Religiosity means it's an extreme form of piety, pretended piety, putting up a show. I'm a very good holy man. Jesus Christ called a spade a spade. He describes this, this religiosity of the Jews. He's describing in the Bible. He's telling his disciples. He said, when you fast, Psalm, Psalm, Rosa, when you fast, do not fast as the hypocrites do. He's telling his disciples, don't fast like the munafiks, the sheikhs and imams of the time. Don't fast like that. Don't do rosa like that. Then he explains, how do they fast? He said, they, when they fast, they don't wash their faces and they don't brush their hair. Gloomy look, gloomy look. You come to the guy, Rabbi, what's wrong? Are you feeling well? He said, no, no, I'm all right. But you see muck in his eyes, unkempt hair. You know, terrible, terrible, it's gloomy, gloomy. So what's wrong, Rabbi, Molana, Ya Sheikh, kya baat hai, tabiat thik hai, you all right? He said, no, I'm all right, my son. But he said, you know, you look so gloomy. He said, no, my son, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. <laughs> fasting. <laughs> See, no, to create the impression, you don't wash your face, with muck in the eyes, and all hair unkempt. And he says, no, my son, I'm fasting. So you say, Mr. Didat, both Allah wala hai. He's a very, 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 very holy man. Hmm. That's the impression. So Jesus says, do not fast as the hypocrites do. They don't wash their faces and don't brush their hair. You, my disciples, when you fast, you wash your face and you brush your hair of a happy countenance that nobody suspects that you are fasting. Nobody knows because you're fasting for the love of Allah. Not for sure. He calls the hypocrite a hypocrite. The Pope calls us religiosity of the Muslims deserve our respect. <laughs> you hypocrites. He says, this hypocrisy of these guys. You know, behavior, trying to be very, very holy. Allah wala. He says, deserves respect. <laughs> I said, your holiness, you know, the boot is on the other foot. The boot is on the other foot. I'm reading daily in the newspapers. I don't know whether, you people don't read newspapers. <laughs> That's my complaint. You people don't read newspapers. Here, Sunday Tribune, 7th of May, 95. It says here, Catholic priest 
on rape charge. New York, Dateline from New York, a Catholic priest from India was arrested on Friday for allegedly trying to rape a woman in the rectory of his New York parish, police said. The Reverend Albert Fernando, 48-year-old, was arraigned on charges of first-degree sexual abuse, first-degree attempted rape, and first-degree unlawful imprisonment. He was held on a $100,000 bail. You know how much is that? That's over 300,000 rand. Who paid for that? Who paid for that? He? That guy, poor beggar from India? Huh? You call him to do service in the church? Who paid that? Where did he get the $100,000 from? Church. You, you bailed him out. And after he goes through his punishment, what do you do with him? What do you do with him? Hmm? You take him back. Put him somewhere out of the way places. You don't punish him. Jesus Christ, he said, that if the eye offends you, cast it out. If the hand offends you, cut it off. That's what he's teaching. Your God, your Lord, Jesus Christ. This is what he says. If the eye offends you, cast it out. If the hand offends you, cut it off. In other words, this eyes of yours is going to cause you to lust, crave for other people's wives and daughters. That will take you to hell. Rather that I be cast out, taken out, and you rise on the other side without an eye, then this eye makes you to go to hell. This hand of yours can't resist touching other people's wives and daughters. This hand will take you to hell. Rather you cut it off. And I have here, I had a story here just now. A young girl in Pretoria, our Pretoria here, And I don't know whether I should read all these things to you. I don't know whether I should read it to you. Newspapers, man. Newspapers is, is being thrown at you. This is from uh, the February News, February 18, 1995. It says here, dateline from Pretoria, penis cutting daughter held. A daughter who cut off her father's private part. The father, he says, is telling his daughter, this is in the article, he says, you know my child, telling his daughter, I can't resist molesting children. It's my, this body, this flesh of mine is such, I can't resist, so help me, for God's sake, help me. Christ said, cut it off. I said, help me, cut it off. And the daughter did her father a favor. She cut it off. Now, the guy is in trouble. So he said, no, a gang came and they just cut it off. Three days time he died. He died in three, bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. It's not a surgical cut. You know, just with a butcher knife, you know, she just cut it off. Now the daughter goes to court to the police and says, look, this is what I did. I cut off my father's penis because this is what he cried to me. He said, help me. He doesn't want to burn in hell. He'd rather be without that here. He's following the teachings of Jesus to the letter. You have your holiness in America at the present moment. At the present moment, there are cases going on against the Roman Catholic Church. In the Time magazine, after the fall, after the fall, these are pictures here of the Roman Catholic priests who have been charged for sodomizing little boys, choir boys in the church. Father. Father J John Henton Han Han in Plymouth Superior Court last week as he was sentenced to three concurrent life terms. He will be eligible for parole in 15 years' time. Father, Roman Catholic Church. And in this article it says, $500 million worth of claims are... are, 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 are are made against the Roman Catholic Church for the priests sodomizing choir boys. You talk about the religious of the Muslims. We don't say we are angels. Wallah, we are not angels. We have black sheep among us as well. We have devils also among us. But man, you take the bun. You take 500 million, half a billion dollars worth of claims. 
So now in England, they passed a law. They're passing a law now. The church said every person who wants to become a priest, we want to go into his life history. We must ask him, did you molest any children at any time? Did anybody ever accuse you? <laughs> Everything about you. Because he says now the insurance companies don't want to pay. <laughs> so now, this is Ben, tell me about $500 million worth of claims against your church for sodomizing little boys. Huh? And you call religiosity the Muslim deserves our respect. <laughs> we deserve your respect, our religiosity. So we said, you see, the boot is on the other foot. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, look, it's a fantastic opportunity, Wallah. See, Allah is giving us opportunity. Wallah is giving me this opportunity. This book, you know, was written for me. Do you know that? Allah made him to write this book for me. I'm telling you. Because no other Muslim can use this book. And I can use this book. His book. Everything, his, every word he uses, I can use it to expound my religion. I'm going to England on the 30th of August on a lecture tour about the same, about the book. His Holiness. Islam's answer to the Pope's pious pronouncement. Lecture, lecture, lecture. This book, I'm telling you, it was written for me. You say no. Then I say, you tell me who was it written for. You see, when this Pope, you know, and I, we were having a, con a communication. He was talking about having a dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. So I wrote to him. I said, Your Holiness, I'm prepared to accept that dialogue. I want to come along to the Vatican at your disposal, at your convenience. When can we have it? Your Bible says, come, let us reason together. And the Quran says... So both religions saying, come, let us talk. We want to talk. And it's a long story. It's a long story. Eventually, I found a picture where he actually shows His Holiness the Pope, you know, playing hide and seek. You must have seen that picture. You must have seen that picture. This one here. You saw this picture? We gave out quarter million men in English and quarter million in Arabic. And you haven't seen it. I know you people don't read this picture here. See, I don't want to show you what he's doing because these guys are catching me on the camera. And then they're going to say, that is playing the game like that. I don't want people to use that picture at any time. Therefore, I'm not doing it. But I, fortunately, I found it as I showed it to you. See what the Pope is doing? So in Victoria Street, there was a pharmacy there, that white man. I forget his name. He's a good friend of mine. Every time in the city hall I have a lecture, he's the first man to come and ask me questions. First man in every lecture. He's the first guy to come along to ask questions. Do you know that? I forget his name. He's the chemist owner. He's not there anymore now. He's somewhere else. So I go to him. You know, he's my friend. We have a brushing. So I show him the picture. He said, where did you get this? Where did you get this? I said, look, don't worry about that. I said, this picture was taken for me. This picture was taken for me. He says, no. It's not for, it, for me. I said, you, you need this picture? Do you need a picture like this of your Pope? Playing monkey tricks. You want, you want your Pope like this? Huh? He says, no. I said, is there a single Christian who needs a picture like this? A picture like this. A single Christian who will want to see his Pope like this, behaving like this. He says, no. So I said, look, I needed a picture like that. So the picture is taken for me. No, Allah is Musa Bibul Asbab. He creates this. He doesn't know. Everybody is set up. Everybody gets set up. You get set up. Allah is setting up everybody. He set me up for this. Wallah, he set me up for this. And if I tell you now how that, that book came into my hand, how, how? It's a setup. Everything is a setup. Me going to Marisburg and spending the whole day there is a setup. Everything is a setup. I'm here. It's a setup. This is what Allah does to everybody. Let's hope that we cooperate with this setting up and do some service to Islam. With these words, Mr. Chairman and my dear brothers and sisters, I'm very, very grateful that on this nice, lovely day you have been able to come and honor me. May Allah reward you all. And uh, this lecture, my usual, all my talks are followed by questions and answers. You have questions, please queue up here. Queue up here. Don't drag your feet. Come, let us finish it early. I think I have taken a lot of time of yours tonight, a lot more than I, normally I give. Come forward, ask your questions, and uh, we'll end with the dua at the end.
واخر دعوانا ان الحمد لله رب العالمين If there's anybody who has any questions please come forward we have one Mr. Dida My name is Rashid Ahmed Mr. Dida I want to ask you uh, one question or more Is uh, I want to ask you who said that uh, there will be no sign shown to you unless the sign of Jonah I want to answer me that first then i'll come to another thing sit down sit down no that was a statement made by jesus christ jesus christ made that statement see the jews came to him and said master mfundisi si thanda ukubona isibonakaliso esinzive esenzive kuwe so master we would have a sign of thee. We want you to show us a miracle to convince us that you are the man we are waiting for. Which is who appendu la wagu what you go bo. Is he zugul one S C B Nisi Pingayo? Sifuna is he bonagaliso? Gapa as he go nigwa si bonagaliso. Kupala is he bonagaliso. Kukachonam prophet. There shall no sign be given unto it. An evil and adulterous generation seek it after a sign, but there shall no sign be given unto it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. In Afrikaans, when so as Yona, three da and three nachta, in the heart from the growth face was, so shall the sin from the man's three da and three nachta, in the heart from the earth face. For as Jona was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. That was said by Jesus. Now, you see, I was just trying to show you that if you want to do a job, you take the trouble. You want to sell something. Yeah. Our forefathers, our forefathers were business people. They started opening little shops and they learned Zulu. You know that? They learned Zulu. So there's a Savana Baba, Mama, you know, Shipile. They learned all that to do business. Right? But we are not learning Zulu. You know why? Because you don't want to do the dawa. Hmm? You can be an imam. You, you, you. I'm pointing at you now. You can be an imam for a hundred years. Just for example. Don't take offense. But you'll never learn to say Sagabona to the African. That's your nature. You'll never learn in a hundred years to say Sagabona. I know, you know that. Our Mulvis, our Alims, our Lamas, in a hundred years, if they live for a thousand years, they won't learn to say Sagabona. Do you know that? And Allah says, wish everyone you know and wish everyone you don't know. And be the foremost in wishing people. But it's not a part of your life. Yes? Uh, good evening, Mr. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm from Cape Town. Inshallah. I'm a truck driver. I'm just driving through. Right. And I received this um, invitation on my Lovely. Lovely. Vehicle. Lovely. Now, uh, I'm a Christian. And I would like to ask you uh, one question that is, why after, since 1948, the 14th of May, when the, the Jews went back to Israel, Israel, they became a, and Israel became a nation and all that. I would love to know. Since that time, they have fought seven wars. Right. All seven have been won by the Jews. Right. And uh, I would love to know why is it that the that country is surrounded by the Arab states? 160 million Muslims. Yes. And they ain't able. To overpower a, a country with 140,000 soldiers in the army. Why is that, Mr. I'll give you an easy answer. Sit down, sit down, yes. You know, Smith in southern Rhodesia, he declared the UDI, Unilateral Declaration of Independence. You remember that? For 12 years, he made the whole of Africa to say, hey, you bloody rubbish, stand afar, don't come near. And there were only quarter million, do you know that? Do you, do you know that there are only quarter million whites in southern Rhodesia? And they had the whole of Africa, your Nigeria, and your Ghana, and your Malawi, and whole bang lot of us, whole bang lot of us, Shh. keep it arm's length, you bloody rubbish, for 12 years. 
He kept us there. No. It's the armory. Weapons. That guy has got the weaponry. America is behind him. Every time the Muslim goes to war against the Jew, he's not fighting the Jew, he's fighting America. In 1973, for the first time, for the first time, the Arabs took the initiative. The Ramadan war, the October war, Sadat crossed the Bar Lev line, he had the Jews by the throat. And the Jews cried. Cried for help. And Regan rushed into the battle with his shh, men and machines through the Azores, direct into the battlefield. So we are not fighting the Jews. This is Jewish facade, it's a front. We are actually fighting America. Inshallah, say God willing, one day, things will come right. They're working, working, today little children are facing them with stones. That spirit will win. This is what God wants. The spirit is the spirit that's going to win. The guy's giving in. He's going to say, all right, now, man, you have a little piece here, a little piece there. His nation says, no. But he still says, no, he knows which side his bread is buttered. So he says, now, leave it to God. God in his wisdom, he's got his plan. Is a purification for us. We need purification. You see, we are not altogether pure. We have to be purified. In our intentions and our spirit, we have to be purified to get victory. It'll take time. But inshallah, it's working. It'll work. Like it happened here in Rhodesia. They got the independence. But for 12 years, Smith, Smith, with his quarter million, he had the whole of Africa. How many? 200 million Africans at bay. Hmm? Or 300 million Africans. Say, you bloody rubbish, keep out. Keep out of my country. And a quarter million at that. So it is the armament, the weapon that did the job. Same thing here. 300 years, the guy ruled us. 300 years. What did it? Is he more than you? No. Is he stronger than you? No. No. He's a weapon. He had the arms. So, fortunately, thank God, uh, the Russians said, well, we'll help the uh, ANC. And Libya says, we'll help you. And so says, we'll help you. Uh, China says, we'll help you. And over a period of time, we got our independence with all this help. One day, inshallah, this Middle East will also come right. Any other question? Sorry, sir. you just mentioned uh, the Chinese and the Russians and, all and the Libyans and Libya and all these right. people coming, uh, promising aid to the ANC and helping them to liberate the oppressed. Uh, what I'm, I want to come to a point here that is, do you expect the same thing to happen in the Middle East? A country like Russia with an army of about 400 million. It's a very strong army, I know about them. And I also know that there's about 80 to 90 percent of the soldiers is Muslim. Yes. About 80 to 90 percent of the Russian army soldiers is Muslim. Because there are a lot of Muslims staying in Russia. And I also I've learned, as you might possibly know, that in the book of Ezekiel, the prophet prophesies about the Russian army coming up against Israel, assisting the Kanda, the Arab nations surrounding Israel to overpower, to, in actual fact, win the war they many years want to win, that is to get Israel out of, uh, to get the Jews out of Israel. What, I want, what I'm saying, Mr. Didat, is this. Is that war going to happen? You know that Ezekiel in the chapter 38 prophesies about that. Is that war going to happen? Do you expect uh, um, America, as you have just said, to intervene and help the Israelis in that war? You see, my son, I don't live in false hopes, these prophecies. People have been waiting for Jesus Christ to come. Do you know that? For 2,000 years. It was any time, any time now. He said, before you go over the cities of Israel, I'll be back. He's telling his disciples, when they persecute you in one city, flee into another. And they persecute you, flee into another. And before you go over the cities of Israel, I'll be back. And they fled, and they fled, and they died, and they rotted in their graves. 2,000 years have gone, and it still hasn't come yet. So, I don't believe in waiting with open mouth 
for somebody to come along and pull the chestnut out of the fire for you. We have to learn to, to do it ourselves, to get the things ourselves. So time will come, but we don't sit on prophecies. See, the Christian was waiting and still waiting, 2,000 years now, for Jesus Christ. He said, before you go over, I'll be back. So same thing happened to the Jews in the, in the, in, in the book of Exodus. God speaks to them. He says, I declare to you this day that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land which you are going over the Jordan to, 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 to cross and, 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 and to conquer. You will not live long in that land. That's your Bible. That's a prophecy. But I said, tell the Muslims, I said, no, don't wait on that. You have to learn to get the things that you want. You have to pay for it. You have to sweat for it. Don't wait for things to happen from heaven because heaven doesn't work that way. It wants you to sweat and God will give you the reward. Any other questions? This will be the last question. This will be the last question. Yes, I did that. Uh, I've got a simple question for you. Since the duty of Dawah to the people is an obligation upon the Muslims and we find that uh, there's an opposition from the, among our Muslim brothers that it's not good to do so. Is it because they're ignorant about Dawa or they want to live in peace with the non-Muslim brothers? If not, then why is that like that? You see, to me, we are not told. We are not told. Nowhere have I found the Muslims in the Muslim world telling the people to go and do Dawa. The Alims, I'm talking about the Alims. They'll tell you about the beard, the size of your beard. Yours is not standard size. Me too, me too, me too. I'm here on the same boat as you. You see? So you're wearing Nasara clothes? Me too, me too. You see? So we are busy with that. We are busy with that. Nobody is telling you to do dawah. This is the awful fard of the Muslim, the first fard. Long before Salat, Zakat, Hajj, and Psalm became fard, Allah tells His Rasul, our Nabi Karim, the Holy Prophet Muhammad. And through him, he's telling us, he says, Fazakir innama anta muzakir. So you deliver the message because it is your duty to deliver the message. Lasta alayhim emosaitir. You will not be questioned regarding them. Illa man tawalla wa kafar. Why they accepted or why they didn't accept, Allah won't ask you. He will ask you, did you deliver the message? And if we can say, Ya Bari Tala, we tried to the best of our ability. If that was very little or great, whatever, you tried, Allah will say, my Jannah is open for you. He will not ask you, why didn't you do like Ahmad did that? I'm telling you, he won't ask you that. Why didn't you like Mawlana Razak? <laughs> he won't ask you that. He said, did you? He said, yes, Ya Bari Tala. What little I knew, I tried. It's good. But if you can say that, I don't know how many of us can say that, that we tried. We are not trying. We are not talking. We are not told. The alims are not telling you from the mimbar. They must tell you from the mimbar. Me, this is my job, my occupation. So what can I do? I have to talk about these things. Say, so I'm making money. This is my occupation. We are worth 20 million. So the guy is very lucky. Huh? Yeah, this is a very lucky fellow. <laughs> no, no, my brothers. There is a law at work. There is a law at work. You have to pay the price. See, all what I was telling you, I can give you 20 different languages. Do you know that? <coughs> Exotic languages. The language of the Dinka, which nobody heard. Even the Sudanese don't know. They are at war with the Dinkas. They are like the Zulus in southern Sudan. John Karam is a Dinka. I learned his language before going to Sudan. I learned Swahili. I know Indonesian. I know Malaysian. I know French. And I'm trying to learn Italian now <laughs> because I got an Italian book of the Pope. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to learn Italian. So if I meet an Italian, I says, you know, uh, His Holiness the Pope, he says, but I'll be telling in Italian. He says, so some of the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Quran. Beautiful, beautiful. Did you read the Quran? So, get started, man. You see, if you want to deliver a message, you'll have that to do something. That means you're paying the price. Ah, by the way, I didn't bring you to show you people. These are all the cards. These are all the cards. This verse I read to you tonight is, is Huma Filhari, is Yakulu Lisahibihi. La tahzan inna laha ma'ana. What? 
I'm learning. At the age of 77, I'm learning. Are you prepared to make that sacrifice? No. You just see, say, the guy's very lucky, man. Hey, he's very, <laughs> he's got a nice jetta. <laughs> no, my dear brothers, there is a price you have to pay. Anybody, everybody. There's nothing for nothing in life. You are a parasite if you expect things to happen to people throwing down manna and salwa from heaven. Allah doesn't do that. God doesn't do that. Those days are gone. You have to sweat for whatever you get. So, this, Jazakallah. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the talk for the evening. I'd like to thank you for coming here this evening. More than that, I'd like to thank Mr. Ahmadidat for a very informative talk. And before we close this evening's proceedings, a dua would be read. Al-Fatiha. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa barq wa sallim. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fi al-akhirati hasanata wa qina adab al-nar. Rabbana la tuzakkulu bana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahmatan inna kanta al-wahab. اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فافنا يا كريم اللهم من أحيته منا فأحيه على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان اللهم إنا بما سأل منه الرسول من خير فقير وما استعاذ منه الرسول من شر نستعيد إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم سبحان ربنا رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين